because I know they're watching me right now, and they're mad at me. Who's they? Um, Terrence Howard, the famous actor, is claiming that one times one equals two. Sounds crazy, right? Or could he be onto something revolutionary? Terrence Howard has been going viral lately after his appearance on The Joe Rogan Show, and this sparked a wildfire of discussion on the internet with a lot of people, including Neil deGrasse Tyson, responding and talking about it. Terrence uses mathematical laws to justify his claim, but do these laws actually support him? He also believes that civilizations were tricked thousands of years ago to misunderstand these concepts and that there's been a global conspiracy to keep humanity in the dark. So does one times one actually equal two? Is Terrence Howard a mastermind or out of his mind? Whether you think he's a genius or completely off his rocker, you're about to find out what this really means. Remember to like and subscribe and my channel is all about understanding the true nature of reality rationally. And when you hit the like button, it helps spread this information. So take a second to hit it now. Also make sure you follow my podcast on Spotify called Dawn of the New Earth and my new book is available now, Neogenesis, Dawn of the New Mind. You can find it on Amazon. Links are in the description of this video. When I began to research this, I couldn't believe what I was reading. Howard has written what he calls a proof for his claim that one times one equals two. So we're going to explore that right now. In his document, Howard starts by claiming that the equation one times one equals one is unfinished and incomplete. Why? Well, he says it's because nature demands equilibrium and that the equation is fundamentally imbalanced. He says that one times one equals one is imbalanced because there are two ones on one side of the equation and only a single one on the other. Each equation is supposed to be balanced. You know, that equal sign is supposed to show that there's a balance between these two numbers over here and a balance on this one over here. What happened to the other one? in this equation. Well, this is a fundamental misunderstanding of how equations work. An equation states that what's on one side equals what is on the other. In the case of one times one equals one, both sides are balanced because one times one is one. How oh, is it that multiplication, if it means to make more and increase in number, how is one times one equaling one part of the multiplication table? So let's remind ourselves what multiplication actually is. Multiplication is at its core, a form of repeated addition. It's basically a shortcut for adding the same number over and over again. For example, if you have five groups of two apples, instead of adding two plus two plus two plus two plus two, you can just multiply five by two. So five times two means you have five groups of two apples, which is 10 apples in total. When we're saying one times one, we're saying we have one group of one item. Imagine you just have one apple. So you would have one group of it. One group of one apple is still just one apple. So one times one, is equal to one. It's straightforward and makes perfect sense and even third graders understand this. But Howard doesn't understand this. He claims that one times one must equal two because he's viewing one times one as being two things, two ones. But that's not how multiplication works at all. It's an operation and in the case of one times one, it's telling us we have one thing one time, which is just one. In his paper, Howard attempts to use mathematical laws to justify his claim. Specifically, his document uses the associative and commutative laws of addition and multiplication. The commutative law is about order. It says that the order of the numbers doesn't change the result. For example, the commutative law means you can swap numbers around and still get the same answer. For example, two plus three is the same thing as three plus two. Whether you add three plus two or two plus three, you get the same total, five. Multiplication is also commutative. You can swap the numbers and still get the same result. For example, two times three is the same thing as three times two. The associative law is all about grouping. It says that when you're adding or multiplying, the way you group the numbers doesn't change the result. For addition, the associative law means that, for example, if you're adding three numbers, it doesn't matter how you group them. For example, two plus three, plus four is the same as two plus three plus four. Both ways, you get the same answer, nine. So whether you add two and three first or three and four first, the total's the same. For multiplication, it's the same idea. For example, if you're multiplying three numbers, how you group them doesn't matter. Two times three times four is the same as two times three times four. Again, both ways gives you the same answer, 24. So whether you multiply two and three first or three and four first, the product, it's the same thing. So these laws are basically about how you order and group things in mathematics. But guess what? These laws have absolutely nothing to do with the assertion that one times one equals two. I reached out to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Started it off with one times one equaling two. And he went in on my treaties, wrote, redlined everything. Then he started attacking 
you know, the one times one equaling two. To make things even stranger, in his document, Terence Howard claims that he has spent five decades contemplating this subject. However, he posted this document in 2017 when he was 48 years old. Five decades is 50 years. So unless he started studying this topic from the age of negative two, it doesn't make any sense. Or maybe he's also discovered time travel? But it doesn't stop there because Howard also asserts that the Anunnaki, or sky people, tricked humanity into believing a fake version of mathematics 6,000 years ago. But don't worry about the sky people because Terence claims to have developed a new form of mathematics that he calls teriology, which apparently is gonna revolutionize mathematics and according to him, make figures like Pythagoras turn in their graves. Let's call this what it is. The claim that one times one equals two isn't just wrong, it's ridiculous. To say that one times one equals two is to misunderstand multiplication at its most basic level. In fact, the claim that one times one equals two is so far off base, it's impossible to take seriously. It's like saying that the earth is flat or that a triangle is actually a circle in Euclidean geometry. It's simply not true and defies the basic rules of logic and math. But what if I told you there was a little tiny microscopic nugget of truth hidden inside all this insanity? So while researching Howard's ideas, they reminded me of something else. See, one times one doesn't equal two, but what if I told you that zero equals two. Now, before you think I've gone as crazy as Howard, let me explain this. This concept comes from Alistair Crowley, a well-known occultist. Crowley proposed the formula zero equals two as a symbolic representation of balance. He posited that reality is composed of balanced positive and negative forces. For example, if you have one and negative one, you end up with zero. In other words, zero equals one minus one. Now this equation is mathematically valid. It means that positive one and negative one cancel each other out, leaving you with zero. But if you notice on one side of the equation, it has two things, a positive one and a negative one. This is why Crowley says zero equals two. But here's the key point. Crowley means zero equals two symbolically or metaphorically, not literally. Zero doesn't literally equal two, and he knew that. Rather, it represents the equilibrium between opposing forces, positive one and negative one, canceling each other out to create a state of balance or zero. In Crowley's system, the concept of zero represents the absolute, the ineffable source of all existence, sometimes referred to as nothing or nuit in his cosmology. The number two represents the manifestation of duality and the created world. The equation zero equals two represents the idea that these dualities ultimately arise from and return to a state of unity, emphasizing the idea that all distinctions are actually illusions and that everything is fundamentally interconnected. Crowley's formula of zero equals two is not intended to be taken literally. Instead, it represents the idea that the sum of positive and negative forces, like positive one and negative one results in a balanced state symbolized by zero. The problem with Terence Howard's argument is that he takes a literal approach to a similar idea. Howard seems to have an intuitive sense that reality has to be balanced, which is a very valid philosophical perspective to have. However, he misapplies mathematical principles to try to illustrate this idea, leading to some very incorrect conclusions. When Howard asserts that one times one equals two, he's making a literal mathematical claim that simply does not hold up. Multiplication is a well-defined operation within the realm of mathematics, and one times one will always equal one. By trying to force this equation to equal two, Howard misunderstands the foundational rules of mathematics. Crowley's formula, zero equals two, is a metaphorical tool for understanding balance, whereas Howard's assertion that one times one equals two is a literal mathematical claim that does not align with mathematical principles. And this highlights a massive issue in new age and mystical thinking in general. People might have an intuitive insight that might be correct in a loose sense, but they completely misinterpret them very often. Now, this usually happens because they aren't analyzing their intuitions with logic and reason. Take the idea of manifestation, for example, which is popular in New Age circles. The basic intuition here is that our thoughts and beliefs can influence our reality. And while that is true to a certain degree, when people believe that just thinking about wealth will make them rich without taking any action, well, that becomes a problem. The power of mindset is real, but without logical analysis, it leads to very unrealistic expectations. This is why in the Neogenian system, system of will forming, we always combine our goals with planning and action for actual manifestation. Then there's things like numerology. Many people feel that this is a mathematical reality. And this intuition, it makes sense, but numerology assigns mystical significance to numbers and claims that they can predict your destiny or reveal hidden truths. For example, let's say someone's birthday is July 16th, 1985. In numerology, you would add those numbers together, 
7 for July, plus 1, plus 6, plus 1, plus 9, plus 8, plus 5, which equals 37. Then from the 37, you would add 3 plus 7 to get 10. And finally, 1 plus 0 to get 1. And then numerologists might claim that this final number, 1, reveals something deep about the person's personality or destiny. But this does not hold up to logic and reason, and it has no basis in reality, even in a mathematical reality. A key issue here is something known as apophenia. Apophenia is the tendency to perceive meaningful connections and patterns in random or unrelated data. Now, this often results in seeing patterns or connections where there aren't any. So an example of this is seeing a face in the clouds. This is fine, but becomes a problem if you think that the face is real. This can be particularly problematic in the realm of metaphysics and spirituality. So let's circle back to Terence Howard's argument. His intuition tells him that there should be balance, but he's not analyzing this intuition with rigorous logic that mathematics requires. Instead of recognizing that one times one inherently balances as one, he forces a false equivalence that totally disrupts the foundational rules of math. I can't emphasize enough just how wrong Terence Howard's idea is. Honestly, just researching this was intellectually painful. We have a vast reality to explore and a world to transform. Arguing about one times one equaling two is a waste of time and embarrassing. Ideas like his are exactly why many people don't take metaphysics seriously. While it's important to be open to new ideas and perspectives, we also have to make sure that our thinking is grounded in logic and reason. On this channel, we explore metaphysics rationally, specifically in our system of meta-rationalism. We explore the deep questions about reality, consciousness, and existence with a commitment to reason. So let's continue to explore the mysteries of the universe with an open mind, but not so open that our brain falls out. Let's keep questioning, exploring, and seeking truth always grounded in logic and reason. And if that sounds good to you, check out my book, Neogenesis, Dawn of the New Mind, which is all about achieving a higher consciousness rationally. Become a member right here on YouTube or Patreon for weekly members only videos. And I wanna give a big shout out to everyone who supports. My name is Morg and I am Neogenian.